Hey, welcome to the Hold the Line podcast, Sean Foyt. I am here in Capitol Hill at Camp Law, just a stone's throw away from the Supreme Court and the U.S. Capitol. And I'm joined by my good friend, <clears throat> Doug LaMalfa, California One, California District One. And, and Doug has just been a such a great friend and support here in D.C. But also, he's actually a praying, Bible-believing member of Congress. Yes, they do exist. And yes, there are a lot of them, surprisingly. And he's joined us in the Capitol several times as we've, wor- we've worshipped and brought guitars in. And I mean, it's just he's just been a really, really great friend. And we're so grateful for you. And so Thank thanks you. for coming on. Thanks for swinging by our place. Well, we're grateful for you and your ministry. And you're taking it out to the streets all over the country. And you're not shrinking from the debate either and i appreciate that a lot so oh, thank, thank you. you thank you doug i uh i i really i want to encourage a lot of people out there a lot of californians right this is uh get, so explain to them the area that you're over you represent in congress well, the fast version would be the state of jefferson but uh, <laughs> yeah that, that'll take some explaining <laughs> exactly it's that northeast corner of california that borders oregon on one part and nevada there so on on the east side so it just kind of runs across the top in the east um, uh, we have uh, Mount Shasta, Mount Lassen. The large towns are uh, Redding and Chico. We have uh, mountains. We have the valleys. We have uh, 500,000 acres of rice in California, um, but also just so many great resources and so many great normal people yeah, live there. You know, a lot of great people. And it's a very spiritual area, I believe, as far as uh, a lot of folks feel like there's a lot of things happening there right. with uh and maybe a, even a revival, you know, because there's a lot of folks, uh, a lot of great folks there speaking out on what uh, what the founding principles of this country are. And they're based on Christian type principles, if not, yeah. if not a forced one, because indeed it was freedom of religion to choose what you want. And then we find in, the, in this country, in the press and the media and on the left, that they're trying to suppress that. But that's prophesized, too. So, yeah. Well, and we're also here today playing uh, playing video games for the Pentagon, right? <laughs> I saw this across the way. It made me think of that submarine deal. So I, I don't actually have one of these at home, but <laughs> but uh, that we're that we're relying upon this to do some pretty uh, amazing things. But uh, may, maybe this is okay. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Northern California. A lot of people. Just to give context, because, you know, we lived in Redding for, for, for many years. Um, you know, I live in Southern California now, and actually, I'm not that surprised. I, I won't mean, hold that against you. Yeah, but I'm not that surprised, actually, you know, the two ends of California. So I'm in Orange County. Of course, there's a lot more Teslas and Range Rovers around Orange County. But the sentiment and the conservatism of people, uh, the pro-America values are 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 very prevalent, just as prevalent as they were when we lived in Northern California with more pickup trucks and farmers and ranchers and stuff like that. Help people understand how big California is. I think a lot of people, and I was explaining in Vermont last night, we had an amazing uh, gathering in Vermont at the Capitol yesterday, and Vermont's a very blue state. It's the most unchurched state in America, mm-hmm. according to recent data. And I was explaining to them about California is like people think it's left, it's off the left coast, it's too far gone. But then God raised up a movement of revival, let us worship in 2020, the height of the pandemic from California that began to sweep across America. Maybe explain as a lifelong Californian, you have a ranch there, you've, you've represented that region for a long time. What do a lot of Americans miss about California? What are they not hearing? Well, the conception, the perception by a lot of people of California is Disneyland, beaches, Hollywood. Right. And that is a, a major chunk of a Southern California economy. And that's kind of an image of that, palm trees and all that. But uh, when my colleagues, they get to know me or one of them was actually traveling in the district the other day, went to the Mount Shasta Caverns and went up, on up to the uh, JH Ranch in Siskiyou County, yeah. where there's a, a really a good sized Christian camp. That a lot of people, a lot of several of my colleagues know about that. They're they're kind of a, uh, amazed that uh, me as a rice grower that, that wow, there's a half a million acres of rice growing in California, as well as many other, many many ag crops. They really think of the coast when they think of California. Right, right, right. And so the politics of California 
is also driven by the coast because, you, as you know, the, ma the vast majority of the population of the state is within, you know, say, a 30-mile line of the coast. Right. So, uh, I mean, you still have Sacramento and the Inland Empire and such, which are significant. But so the, the, the numbers of a population, like anything, dominate uh, the, the discussion. They dominate right. the politics. You know, right. San Francisco, L.A., San Diego are going to elect our statewide politicians for right. the time being. So um, that, that's what we run up against. But people find out like, well, hey, you know, I'm one of there's 52 House members. There's about 12 Republicans. Um, they don't think there's really any Republicans in California, like we're right. endangered species, especially <laughs> I'm a pretty conservative one. So when I talk about the things I talk about, they're kind of, wow, my, you know, my Southern colleagues and Midwestern ones, yeah. they go, wow, there is some of the guys that talk like us around here. Right. So. Yeah. And, and, and I think that, you know, there, there is obviously, as we saw in the last election, um, you know, New York and California flipped the house. Had it not been for those victories in, in those two states, which are very blue states. We picked up um, four important seats in New York and a couple in California. Uh, New York, of course, is going to take another whack at redistricting again and change the lines. That'll be a bit of an issue. But uh, we, uh, you know, we've held some important seats in California and we're, we're on the offense looking at a couple more, you know, on the political side of it, which a lot of people want to hear about politics and elections all the time. I don't blame them. You know, because there's these, there's a there's the other 729 days between elections. We're supposed to get stuff done around, right, right. You know, and who's in power, all that. Right. I get that. I get that among normal people. But certainly, when you get down to the bottom line, it makes a difference who does hold the gavel there. With the Republicans in as a House majority this time, we are stopping a lot of bad stuff and putting forth good ideas. Take take the defense authorization we did last week. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if Pelosi and the gang were in charge, there's no way we would have been getting uh, amendments in there to stop funding right. abortion, to right. stop, but uh, you know, transport, tr transporting people uh, on the on taxpayers' dime to uh, abortions from states that don't have them, states that do have them, and pushing forward on all this uh, transgender business and such that is becoming more and more prevalent in the military, where right. we shouldn't be paying for these operations. We should, you know, yeah. there used to be a very tough sifting operation of, you know, you can be in the military if you're flat footed. Now you got to, you know, it's still good to have the parts you were born with. Right, right. You know, right. But anyway. You know, so. so, so you've, you've, you've served in many different eras, right? I mean, you, of Congress. Wh wh who was president when you first Oh, that was, got elected? I came in during the beginning of the second term of Obama. Yeah. Okay. So you, you were and here. A lot of people believe Romney was going to win. So that was a bit of a shocker walking in the door on that you know wow so. so you were here obama uh trump and now you're hearing biden and and congress has flipped back and forth a few times since then right right uh how do you compare this season that you're in congress right now on a, on a spiritual dimension on a legislative dimension of course i wanted to also mention prefacing that question saying you know in the pelosi era i wasn't able to do what I've done with you in the last year, which is worship inside of the Go Capitol. Go inside times, the Capitol, which is yeah. really cool. Yeah, I mean, not like the taxpayers pay for it or anything, but <laughs> well, Sean, as you know, and you and you were one of the great resistors during the nonsense that ninety percent of COVID was. Right. right, you know, I mean, not forcing everybody into the mask, not saying no. Right, and we saw we saw so many churches negatively affected with people having to park out in the parking lot and like a drive-in and such, you know, I mean, right. hey, I, I, I enjoy the spirit that you're, you're going to have it one way or the other. Yeah. And that, you know, your, your leaders are telling you, you have to do it this way, which that's, that's one of the rubs I have where biblically we say, you know, you're supposed to obey your, your leaders and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. You know, and I, I, I have a problem when you have bad, bad leaders, Right. you know, but I try to remember that and be good. But it's, uh, it's an issue the, how it's changed lately. COVID um, the way it was responded to by government, by media, right. really set us on a, a, a pretty scary course of government control. Right. And Biden has picked up right off, right, right off there since Trump left, and used that uh, with his executive orders and and the aggression with which they're doing everything's on, everything on. I mean, they're still fighting to have people be in masks. They got mad at In and Out the other day making a In and Out burger because they decided we're not having any more masks right. here. I love that. And so. 
And there's people pushing back. Well, this is so irresponsible. Like, well, yeah, in and out said you can't, for those that don't know, yeah. they said you can't wear a mask in, at in and out serving people unless you have a medical reason. For the employees, right. Right, right. for the employees, yeah. Yeah, except for in California, they're going to have to dance the dance a little more carefully in California as mandates, but all, all the other states. But see, they're, they're resisting it. They're resisting the right. nonsense because... Right. A mask basically is trying to catch a mosquito with a chain link fence right, anyway. Right, totally, but, exactly. You know, but people are going to hate me for that one too. But, you know, all during that COVID thing, I tell people, use your discretion on this. I'm not going right. to be one that says, get the shot, wear the mask, right. stay home all the time, because the country still has to operate. Right. You know, who are the essential employees? The ones that keep the lights on, the ones that keep the, the, the food coming to the stores right. and all that. Essentially, yeah. there you have uh, government deciding who the winners and losers right. are, which yeah. is nonsense. Yeah. So... I don't know this all ties back into this era we're in right now. Yeah. Uh, Pelosi and the Democrats picked up on the COVID thing and have used that as a way to really uh, to put the kind of controls on us that right. have been unprecedented. From right. when I first got here in the House, yeah. you know, in 20, early 2013, we've seen this devolve right. into, into so much. Uh, you know, they're trying to tell us we can't have gas stoves or what kind of car. Right. God. And, you know, I, I was looking at an article earlier on electric vehicles like, well, you can't, you really shouldn't use, try and charge them in the extreme heat. Plus, they don't charge very well in the extreme cold. You should try and park <laughs> them in the shade. And there's all there's all these things listed about how you, how you need to baby these vehicles totally. that they're forcing you to have in, in, right. in a few years. So government control has really been hyper aggressive. And we've been feeling that as Californians for a long, long right. time anyway. Right. But they used to at least have some level of of, uh, oh, what would you say, holding back a little bit. Jerry right. Brown, I, and I told everybody when Gavin Newsom came in, you're going to miss Jerry Brown, okay? Because yeah. he he was a little more freewheeling and such like that. He's actually a constituent now over in Calusa County. Oh, wow. But, uh, but Newsom, he doesn't, he doesn't really care how much it negatively affects anybody. There seems to be no... Uh, no compunction end. about them, how much it hurts the economy, how much it hurts individuals. Right. They're pushing their mandate. Right. Well, there's this climate change nonsense and, right. and making everything electric cars and right. electric everything. I don't know what you run a generator on when it's all electric, but that's a yeah. different story. So it's just, it's just we've seen a much, a much greater aggression by people wanting to use government as, as a weapon. And the media is not holding them accountable to it. So really it comes down to us. Like what you're doing, you're being out there on the front yeah. line on this as a spiritual leader, but also saying, you know what, as spiritual leaders, we have to also fight for our freedom in this country. Yeah, yeah. And so I appreciate that greatly. That's what I try and do as an insider yeah. in that building over there. Does it, did, do you feel like, I mean, changing of the guard, of course, you know, a, a leader from California, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in the, in the House, House majority. So do you feel like the, the spiritual component of things have changed? How has that been here? Like just the climate, as you've seen different eras, where do you feel like spiritually people are at and Congress is at? And... Um, it's that's it's very interesting to try and separate out. Now we have uh, there's several Bible study groups and, and yeah. prayer groups and such. I'm I'm take part in a couple of them. There okay. are opening opening nights of uh, each week. We have a ability to have a prayer session in between yeah. votes. We pray for people you know that we know, and then uh, there's several Bible study groups. There's fellowship groups. So it's not a complete place full of heathens you might look right. like from the outside and, yeah. and some of it's even bipartisan too so um and, and that's and that's positive you know because it really shouldn't be about partisanship at all right. at the end yeah. of the day jesus doesn't care what party you are he just right. wants you to be with him yeah you know so and try and follow the values and the right. morals of all that so but there's such a darkness over everything here that the the light is in there and of course light defeats darkness but mm -hmm. we need more of the light yeah the it is so it feels so dark and oppressive around here and uh and we need folks as i keep as i keep saying to folks as what they're doing what they're trying to do our kids these days you know hyper sexualizing our kids yeah. in school and all that yeah. stuff yeah we have to get normal people off the bench and down to the school board meetings right. and taking apart an election right. process it isn't me electioneering it's saying pick people that are going to stand up for the values that uh, yeah. they know are right. Yeah. And don't be intimidated by those that are out there going to scream at you, that are going to come right. get in your face and you yeah. know scratch your car and all that. Right. We have to be bigger than all that. And we can't, we can't just 
stay home and say, oh, politics is so messy and ugly and stuff. Right. And, you know, we shouldn't talk about politics and religion yeah. in a polite conversation. Well, what else do you want to talk about? It's serious. Like, who right. cares what they had on, you know, Survivor the other day or even a ball game watching $300 million baseball players. At some point, you got to figure out how frivolous all that stuff is. Right, yeah. We're so wanting to be entertained these days. We're, we're so self-indulgent. Look at look at a wedding these days. The, the, the girls got to go off and have a destination bachelorette party. And I don't know what the boys do anymore. And the, the weddings have to be destination weddings and all this stuff. Like, well, why are we so indulged these days right. with all these trappings right. when we're letting our complete set of values and yeah. the good country we used to be Right. Just completely slip away. Right. And so what atmosphere is that going to be for our kids to try and right. grow up in when all day long in school it's left-wing uh, craziness on, yeah. you know, on gender, gender. All, nobody, had to, nobody had to contemplate what gender right. they were when, yeah. when we were in school. You know what I mean? it's, like a total, it's like a total fight against divine design. I mean, that, that's, that's what it is. It's like, the, it's like this mocking, perverse spirit that's coming against the, the image of God. I mean, an, an attack, that's literally what it is. An attack against gender is an attack on the image of God, right? Because we're made in his image. We're so created. Yeah. you see this, and, and really, I, I sense that too. I mean, the, 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 the epicenter of this battle is, is right here. And so that's why, that's why we're doing what we're doing, and we're trying to worship, and we're in, trying to impact people. But, but also, not just here, it's in the minds of people across America. It's in the... It's in the, 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 the season where we can't just, as, as you mentioned, just go to a prayer meeting or just do our three fast and three slow songs on Sunday morning and think that we're, we have to engage and actually I'm not very good at that faith part. without works <laughs> is dead. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Yep. And so rising up, engaging in the, in, in, in the process, not just being a, you know, a, a keyboard warrior on Twitter, but actually mobilizing people to take a stand and make a difference. Um, I think that that's the entire heart of this podcast and this place and why we're doing this, you know, getting information out there on how people can engage. One of the questions I, I have for you that I want to target specifically to Californians because that, that might be our largest viewership in terms of this podcast. And there's a lot of people in, in our state that, you know, would say, well, what I'm, I'm this close to just bailing. Yeah. I'm this close. And it was interesting. I want to talk about this too, because over the last week we had this crazy a AB 14 bill that was, was struck down, put forth by our friend, Senator Shannon Grove right, right. Uh, to uh, criminalize um, uh, uh, ch uh, using children for sex to criminalize that as a felony slam dunk seems yeah of course everyone would think yes why is it not a felony already uh pass the senate yeah, sex trafficking kids yeah, yeah that should be a slam dunk right, exactly pass the senate got blocked by the house insane of course we mobilized prayer i know the governor got involved all this kind of stuff and and thankfully it 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 passed but a lot of people would look at that they would look at the nonsense they would look at the insanity of california they would think i need to this place is God forsaken. This place, whatever. I need to leave, go to Florida, go to Texas. What is your encouragement to Californians to stay and fight? It will follow you if you leave. Okay, if we don't take a stand someplace, you you're, you're not going to keep running away from it. And right. I I don't blame folks for pulling out. You know, for business reasons. You know, Tesla and the, the you know the Bay Area, San Francisco can hardly even host a convention anymore. Right. And you know, you've seen the crime there. You know, the small businesses and they're all just saying, forget about it, we're, we're pulling up. I don't blame that business decision. But, um, it, and I, I just, I think for people here, like me as a farmer, okay, I'm not gonna move my land, okay? Right, right. Our family's been farming rice right. in Northern California, part of it since about 1914, you know? And so, and I'm also as a as a, an elected official, taking a stand here too. So, right. the, you know, this this job takes a chunk out of me. and it, and it isn't great, the greatest for my family, right? Yeah. And so they're understanding, but there's a price to be paid for all this. Right. But I think it's very important we all take a stand and do it in whatever capacity you can. And so if leaving the state, yeah, again, I'm understanding that you know if you've reached retirement and you're trying to protect your nest egg, you can do it a lot easier in Texas or Florida or somewhere else yeah. and such. But where do you want to draw the battleground? Where, right. where, where are you going to keep? Where are you going to let them push 
until, until you stop. Right. Because this stuff follows to other states. Right. It feels like to some of our smaller states that Californians are colonizing them with their craziness, okay? And it's, this isn't just the conservative Californians that are moving away, but some of the other stuff. Austin, Texas is like Berkeley now. Nashville. You know? Nashville, yeah, yeah. Well, great old Nashville. I mean, come on, man. Ernest Tubb record shop and, <laughs> you know, all those great uh, country stars and stuff. But uh, so we have to draw the line. And so yeah. for if you're, if you're not a retirement age, stay and fight. Yeah. You know, try and find a way to protect your assets. Your assets include your kids. Yeah. You know, you you got to find a way to private school them or homeschool them right. or something. Oh, it's expensive. It's going to take all my time. Well, I'm not here to judge or say what you got to do with your life, but maybe you got to rethink that a little yeah. bit of how to do it. You know, find a teacher who's, you know, my wife was a teacher in the public schools. So somebody like that that wants to teach a group of kids right. and be hired by a group of parents on that or something that uh, could uh, could help educate your kid in the way you want it yeah. to happen without all this nonsense. It really should be the three R's and make them that are gonna be competitive in a, a global environment we have. You know, China's yeah. just gonna com- keep running over us here. We're playing climate change. You know, what, what percent of the atmosphere is CO2? If I ask you this one before, I'll just tell it for your listeners. It's 0.04%. 0.04 percent. It's it's gone up about one one hundredth of a percent in the last you know six decades or so. So we're going to all be forced to move into a cave and eat worms because you know Klaus Schwab <laughs> wants us to do that. Don't believe these globalists. Don't believe the guys that fall in with them. Think about those folks that are America first. Okay. Right. Oh, that's bad. That's bad. America first. Nonsense. When we do the hand on the Bible and the oath. We swear to uphold the California Constitution and the U.S. Yeah. Constitution, yeah. and those are supposed to be first. The American yeah. people are first. Yeah. You know, Mike Pence. I don't know what he was thinking the other day when he said that. What he said. I think he. I think he misspoke. Yeah. I think, I think he, he spoke too. wrong. Yeah. Mike is a decent man, but he, he's not. He's not hitting home runs with what he's doing. But <laughs> uh, but we always have to be thinking about what is it we're here for? It's to right. strengthen our country right. and the American people because yeah. we are the beacon of light around right. the world when we're doing the right thing. Right. And we seek God in doing it. Yeah. When we ask him to bless us. Yeah. A good colleague of mine from Texas, Mike Conaway, when we ask God bless America, he would always say this in his his speeches, what are we asking him to bless? Right. And that's a very good question right now. Are we asking him to bless the stuff that's coming out of the state, California state legislature, or the fighters like Shannon Grove and James Gallagher that are fighting back on that? Yeah. And over here in the House of Representatives, we're... uh, and, and, and our and our Congress here, and, and I can't I can't ex- I can't over express to people how many good leaders we have in California. Okay, on on, on the state level, on the congressional level, how much gold go- still God has. And so that's always my encouragement. I mean, I love what you said about like, well, where are you going to draw the line? If you leave, it's going to follow you. And I do believe, you know, it I, is mean, I mean, then that, 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 that famous saying, so goes California, so goes the nation. And so, unfortunately, and, and so we, 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 it is important for us to take a stand. And every, I think every college campus, every university has the same nonsense going on. It isn't just crazy Berkeley or right. UCLA, every college in every state. So each one of those is a hub for this nonsense. strange thinking to spread out in that state, you know, right. University of Missouri, Ohio State. Michigan, any of them, they all have this right. stuff going on, and it's the professors. So we've right. lost the education system. Right. We we're going over this, you know, all the different pieces we've lost to the far left with media, yeah. education, the corporate folks, the CEOs. Yeah. These are lizard men. They right. don't care about anything. Right. This right. ESG business, right. you know, they, they don't care about our country prospering. They yeah. don't care about that. What the yeah. type of energy that we use in this country still needs to be based on oil and gas yeah. with developing more and better ways right. of doing things. You know, they're ruining our economy, and China and others are laughing all the way to the bank because we're being displaced in the world. Right. So do you want people like China and President Xi with their moral values leading the charge right. around the world? Or do right. you want what the United States can be, being the beacon right. of light and the, the freedom? You know, we're the only one that has a constitution that guarantees so much the right of the individual. Right. You, know, you look at other countries that attempt it, Nah, they still have their parliaments right. that pick their executive right, leader. Exactly. I was watching yeah. Scalia on a, vid- a video talk about this the other day. You know, nobody has the separation of powers with the judiciary, right. yeah. the legislative, 
and the executive are all separate like that. Yeah. And nobody emphasizes the right of the individual the way we do. Right. So that's extremely important. We have to preserve that. Amen. Ultimately, that's going to be ripple through all of our values for our families and for what we believe in. If we don't protect that, if we try to move to another state or another yeah. country, you know, that beacon is, is going to be... Well, and you see, I mean, you see the left's hijacked the media, the left's hijacked the education, as you said. The left has hijacked the corporate CEOs. They're all woke and crazy. The left has hijacked the finance industry, the banks. The left has hijacked uh, the political establishment in many ways, um, it, it, as seen in this city. So, Sean, but, how, do you, how do you think that's happened? <laughs> but one thing that the left has not hijacked, and we cannot allow them to hijack, which is the hope of the world, is the church. And so that's... And grade, grade the church for me these days. Well, I'm telling you, uh, last night I was very hopeful. The Church of Vermont, the least church city in America, yeah. rose up with some serious fire. Okay. And so I, I, I believe, I mean, I, I, you know, talk about Matthew 16, Jesus saying the gates of hell shall not prevail. I feel we're in a Matthew 16 moment where it's like, okay, we got all this nonsense. We got all these... Uh, parts of society that have been hijacked, but you know what? We cannot allow the church to become another one of those areas that's taken over. No, the, the gates of hell will not prevail. And so that really is our heart. I mean, that that's why I believe maybe God has set the table for the church to come in like the first great awakening, second great awakening, like the Jesus people movement, like the, you know, Azusa Street revival in those seasons of crisis in America. God raised up the church with fire. And so thank God there's people like you. Thank God there's other people that got his position in government, more in so, media. More so what you're doing. I don't know sometimes how much we accomplish over there in that building. What you're doing with bringing thousands of people together, everywhere you're going yeah. there for a while, at least, you had mass crowds of people listening. These are young people because yeah. look at the statistics. Young people are turning away from the church. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Is the church you know, providing something that is really capturing the heart yeah. or they, you know, is it a having the right kind of coffee and programs and stuff? I know I'm going to make people mad here, but you know, when you, when you look at yeah. what, what is the bottom line on this? Yeah. You know, it's, it's walking with God. It's, it's saving their souls, but also becoming disciples and moving yeah. out and trying to bring more on board, yeah. you know, because that's, that's really the ultimate calling on this. And Amen. we've been doing it big time. Well, thank and you. so I hope I can have a bit of a voice over there as well. And, no, you do. C-SPAN and, and, and stuff, but it's just, it's just, uh, and then, and how we legislate, but we can never really legislate the right thing because when you try and talk to people that are not believers on the other side, of that, right. they don't know what you're talking about. Right. When you try and legislate yeah. a moral issue on whether it's this transgender business or marriage or, or abortion yeah. or some other related things that uh, they don't know what you're talking about from a right. biblical standpoint, Yeah. you know, and so they got to be brought into the fold. But uh, what's interesting too is that some some of those left leaning politicians, they'll they'll admit behind the scenes that they know they won't get elected if they embrace that too loudly. Yeah, and so that's got to be. A, I, I feel bad for them because that's got to be a real conundrum. Of if you if you if th this is a part of the faith you believe in, but you have to suppress that in order to not right. come off as not pro abortion enough or right, pro transgender right, enough right. or this or that, then. That's that's difficult. I have actually the freedom to stand for these issues yeah. the right way. Yeah. And so in that sense, and I have a district of people that support, by and large support yeah. me. Yeah. You know, I don't. There's a couple of hot spots that hate my guts, but you know, by and large, the people around there, you know, they'll tell me, "Hey, Doug, we're praying for you. Yeah. We're behind you. Yeah. Keep doing it and stuff." Yeah. You know. Come on. So this this is all the normal people. Sometimes the money people don't like me that much, and whatever. But uh, I, I'm not, uh, I, the, the, the trappings of this place just don't impress me that much the more yeah. time it goes by. But uh, Well, I, I, think, I think it's encouraging for people. I know it is for me just to know, and I, I, you know, those of you guys, I, I want to say this about Doug. I mean, he'll, he'll be walking through the Capitol praying at night. People won't even know that he's in there. He won't broadcast it. He won't put it on social media. He'll gather with people. He's, he's a prayer warrior, and, and that's what you're doing. You're not just representing California one. I mean, you are doing that, but you're, you're, you're also representing the kingdom of God and you're bringing that spiritual component to a place that really needs it. So, but guys like you help keep towing us along. Come on. Okay. All right. Help. You do that. You do that because <laughs> it's so easy to get into the day-to-day -day 
kerfluffle of stuff. Got to go to this. Got to go to that. Yeah. That that that. And my staff all want to know where are you going right now. Like I'm going to a thing with a friend. What is it going to be? You're like, relax. I'm growing up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We can, we, we can handle it, okay? Relax, you know, I'm a grown as, up. As I'm going to go do this thing, you know? Uh, so, uh, but I'm, I'm grateful you, you gave me, you messaged me today so we can come yeah. do this and that you're, you're hanging in there. Cause, well, uh, thank you. Um, we, we have to have, we have to get people off the bench. Yeah. And that includes our churches as well, you yeah. know? You don't have to become hyper-political, but you have to look at what's going on around you yeah. and not be afraid to engage in Come it on. because That's we're good. losing it. That's very and good. And it's going to be the, the innocent, the ones that we're supposed to protect. Our kids are given to us by God to raise in the way he would have, train them so they can go out and be strong people. And if we're letting them go to the wayside because we're letting the school system or media and all the garbage on the, you know, the phones and stuff, you know, the iPhone, man, when Steve Jobs came out there, you know, it's an amazing technology. But I, I have to wonder if, if we could put that back in the, <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, because uh, it's, it's it, and I'm guilty. I got two of them, okay, you know, to do my different stuff on. I'm looking at mine all the time, and I feel stupid, especially when you walk into a room and everybody's looking down at this machine here. Right. Man, Yeah. we, we got to. And, and that, and that stuff that's coming at you all day long, yeah. there, especially our all kids. All day, yeah. We have to protect our kids. If nothing else, this is what should motivate people to get off the bench and do things to protect, yeah. our, protect our kids from all this stuff that's going on. Yeah. Because it's coming at you all the time. Yeah. You know, the the powers that be know that's where it's going to be. Yeah. They, as, as we were talking about, they took over the education system. We have to find our own niches in that. Yeah. And like our California state legislature, they fight every day to say, well, we got to hold these uh, charter schools or private schools accountable. Right. Are you kidding me? When you look at the numbers they're putting out with LA Unified and others yeah. there, and and the graduation rates and the uh, the the rates on math and reading and such, like <laughs> look look in the mirror on that one, man. Yeah. You know? So it's just we can go all day on this, but it's really so important that we have people engaging in that. And then you know more politically, I guess we have to have an economy that we can uh, that is strong enough in this country to sustain what it is we're doing. So yeah. when we talk about where's our energy gonna come from? We need North American energy that's oil and gas. It isn't all gonna be windmills and solar panels, which are fine in their own niche. Uh, we need nuclear power, go to a lot of meetings on that. We need sustainable power right. that can power us through everything yeah. because our economy is based on energy. My tractors don't run without diesel. Yeah. If you want food, these farmers gotta keep They gotta have doing. diesel, baby. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, we got to cut some trees, otherwise we're going to burn them. Every oh gosh! Year. A, a million acre fire, the Dixie yeah. Fire in NorCal, that burned a million acres in my district. What's that do for the economy? What's that do right. for the people? Yeah. What's that do for the atmosphere? That smoke plume hit Washington and New York two years ago. Yeah. So, we have to do common sense things and not just fall prey towards this mantra of worshiping the environment. That's right. what it is. You know, yeah. climate change is, you know, largely Misgu not mis misguided worship. Is yeah. what it is. Can you, before we end, can you just say a prayer for people out there that are listening? Sure, sure. Prayer from DC. Okay. Do you want to do it this way or? Okay. Yeah, right. do it. All right. Lord, we thanks for this we give thanks for this opportunity to gather. We thank yeah. you for Sean, his strength, his willingness to stand in the fire and take the criticism and be out front and, uh, and enlighten so many and bring the youth with them, the young people that yeah. are that have been a little bit lost, that have uh, been turned away by false advertising and, and the phoniness out there, bringing them on board with something that's real. We thank, for, thank you for his ministry and for being willing to be uh, speak the truth and on the front line. We give thanks for the opportunity to represent like I get to do over there and that I have so many great, great colleagues that also believe yeah. strongly in you and, and your message and your salvation that um, that that stays alive in the Capitol, that it can be bipartisan or nonpartisan in its nature, that uh, what's good about this country and its founding, it will still be good going forward. Indeed, mm -hmm. that when yeah. we ask you to bless this country, that you have something that you can bless and be proud to bless, and that we can uh, stand to your standard in doing so. Uh, please give us all this strength to, to move forward, to move off the bench and into the battle that's coming here, because we know what it looks like. We know that it doesn't get easier. Persecution is coming our way as Christians, as our, our Jewish friends. It's, it's we're, we're seeing it right now, where it's yeah. popular to uh, 
attack us and belittle what we're talking about when it, indeed all we have is a positive message of salvation and how life will be better for you just by embracing these basic things including uh, your son who brings us salvation we ask these uh, blessings on you from you on us on our nation on our state on us as individuals give us strength and for those that are um, that are suffering uh, economically or suffering with health issues put the put the light back in their eye give mm -hmm. give them something to move forward through through tough times even if even if they're in a terminal situation let them find you and and that we can help be the light for them as uh, we do have difficult times uh, across the board for uh, whether it's homelessness or for those battling disease and our, our health situation we uh, we ask blessings on all all of them so uh, with that, uh, we're grateful for this time and for this uh, ministry and this opportunity to communicate with folks. And may it be something that they, that the, the viewers can pick up from and uh, go strengthen the people they come in contact with each day. Give thanks uh, for our great country and, and, yeah, and this opportunity. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thanks so much for okay. being on there. Incredible.